evening, and thanks for joining us for Todd Clint SharePoint Podcast number 266, recorded live on Monday, October 26, 2015, from sunny Cincinnati, Ohio. Actually, I guess it's not really sunny because, well, it's nighttime, but you get the idea. Uh, I am your host, Shane, proof that anything is better than Todd Young. And contrary to rumor that uh, Todd told you last week about me and a scary beard and needing to shave it all, it's not the case. You can see how pretty I am. Um, I did my hair for you guys. And this is a big deal. Um, you know, and Todd made that reference last week about me having, I don't know, a, a cat on my face or something like this. Um, I just think it's silly. I also write a point on the future. If he's going to make dumb jokes, he should make better ones, right? Because we all know Family Guy already did the joke. And in reality, it was, you know, Peter put the uh, put Brian on as a mustache. So it is a dog duct tape to your face is what uh, a bad beard looks like, not um, a cat. But Todd's cat obsessed, so what do you do? All right. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm in one of those moods, so it should be fun night. Uh, of course, before we get started, I need to thank our sponsor, right? They're the ones that give Todd a paycheck, the ones that give me a paycheck, they're the ones that make this bandwidth and all the fun stuff for this webcast possible, and that is our friends at Rackspace. Woo! Rackspace, yay! Um, very exciting stuff. As always, please check out our uh, uh, lovely website, rackspace.com slash Microsoft for all the things that we do from a Microsoft point of view. Since if you're watching the show, you're probably a Microsoft kind of guy or girl. Or um, www.rackspace.com slash Azure, one of my personal favorites. And then, of course, sharepoint.rackspace.com. Right? Is that enough URLs? Is that enough plugs? Yay, Rackspace. Yay, Rackspace. All right. Um, on the production notes, clearly you can tell that Todd is out of town because you have a much better looking host. Um, he is at Dev Intersections in Las Vegas. Um, and they uh, are letting him, I think, speak on a couple of different things. Kind of a little creepy for them, but it is what it is. Um, next week, he'll also be out. So you get me two weeks in a row. Woo, 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 woo. Um, and those uh, next week he'll be out at the uh, the SharePoint Summit in Redmond, or the SharePoint Summit, the MVP Summit out in Redmond. Um, I did not get to go, so instead I got to stay home and hang out with you guys. I got a choice: go to the MVP Summit, and hang out with a bunch of Microsoft people, or host this show and hang out with you. I chose you because I like you. Um. Other than that, really nothing to see in the uh, the production notes. Um, probably because Todd was too lazy to write up any. I assume he got everything published online because I actually uh, checked and the show was out there from last week, so hopefully it's all good and well. Uh, last little piece on the production notes. Lori wanted to remind me um, that there are a there is a there are there is a, a survey right there. You guys are running a survey for updates to the podcast homepage, so. ToddQuint.com slash podcast survey. And so, you know, uh, you know, being in the, uh, the illustrious position that I'm in, I got access to the, uh, the survey results. And I really got to say shame on you guys, right? I just don't think you're taking it seriously. Uh, why? Because I went and looked at the survey, and, you know, this is what I found. Right? And so for those of you watching the podcast, it's a little harder to see because uh, you can't see a podcast. But... Um, you know, the suggestions for the homepage were more Shane, less Todd, and more Lori. I mean, guys, you got to take it seriously, right? We need a good, solid survey there, so please do. I mean, some of the comments, right? I think the best way to improve the page would be to have that good, wholesome boy Shane host the show. Todd should accept that he is just a sidekick. And they signed their name at uh, user underscore TK mom. So... I don't, I don't really know what that's about. I mean, I appreciate the kind words, but you just would have thought that, um, you know, you guys would get feedback on them not using the blink tag and things like that. But no, instead, you guys, uh, you know, said, hey, more shame. So I'm honored, but try and help Todd out a little more. Um, also, some of the other comments we had was, is Iowa really even a state? And that was signed at non-frequent flyer, um, which I kind of agree with them. I still don't think it's a state either. And then, of course, there was the uh, hashtag, right? Is it still cool to do the hashtag thing? I'm not up with, is that like a Miley Cyrus type of thing? Um, but anyway, there was the hashtag uh, Todd Stinks. 
and that was by figuratively and literally the user. So anyway, that is uh, that you guys do a better job with podcasts in the future. All right. So moving right along, we'll get into some more uh, more fun things. Um, and so one of them came from uh, my good friend Jerry Lucanu, who often watches the show and uh, you know gives me ideas. I'm not gonna lie. Monday morning when I have to do the show, I send out an email to a small group of my friends like, "Hey, what should I talk about?" And Jerry's always good. To, he gave me about ten suggestions, and I always pick at least one because Jerry's a smart dude. Um, and so this week he shared uh, for me a link for. Um, the grammar girl where she talks about is it internet with a capital i or internet with a lowercase i and it is like three or four pages of hardcore detailed thought and information on when you should use the capital i version versus the lowercase version well you know me i could care less because i quite frankly am not very good at grammar to begin with and i'm not very good at girls so grammar girl just has nothing for me um but I thought that our friend Todd, you know, who gets really upset about things like it's and it's, you know, apparently the apostrophe where that is really bothers him. Uh, or if you ever really want to see uh, Todd lose it, just uh, do uh, lose, L-O-S-E, versus loose, L-O-O-S-E. You mess those two words up, and Todd, like, I think he loses five years from his life. I think a blood vessel on his head automatically pops. So anyway. If you ever wondered when you should use capital I versus lowercase i, Grammar Girl to the rescue, and I provided the link. Um, keeping on the idea of changing your life, here's some life advice that I wish I had known just three or four days ago. So we're all pretty much lazy computer nerds, right? You know, and we do a lot of things in Word and Excel and PowerPoint. I mean, I'm a manager these days, so PowerPoint's like, you know, my bread and butter. Well, Microsoft got smart a few years back, and with Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, um, they went ahead and um, you know set up autosave. So it's automatically there, right? It's 10 minutes by default the day you get it. Most of us, the day we install Office, we run in there and we change it to three, right? You're all smart with that. You're all good. And so that way, when things like your Windows 10 machine that you hate decides to reboot in the middle of the night and install updates for you, which is a good thing, um, you know, all your documents will come back because nothing else autosave caught them, even if you forgot to hit save, like sometimes I do. Well, I found out the hard way that Visio 2013 does not have autosave on by default. So that's right. So th last Thursday when I spent about two hours making a Visio chart of how ideas should flow, you know, the left brain to the right brain, that type of flow, um, you know, I, I used it, I showed it to some people, I presented it in a meeting, right? It was, it was good, solid information. But I never taken the time to hit save on that good, solid information. I just left Visio up and running. Then I took Friday off to go golfing, came in on Monday, and I needed to have a meeting to show someone else, and guess what? It wasn't there. So then I started looking around the autosave locations, right? I'm smart, I know where autosave happens. It wasn't there. So then I uh, went to the autosave settings for Visio to see if maybe it had a special home. And it said, nope, I don't autosave by default. Sorry about your luck. So there you go. Between you and me, you've got to learn to go in right now. Take a moment. Open up Visio. Go to options. Uh, saving. Internal autosave because it sucks when you find out it's not there by default. Okay, now that I'm really sad, um, we'll move to the next topic because I'm really sad. Um, and actually, it's another uh, topic of great personal pain. This morning, I also got an error message, right? So I got an error message that my Visio was gone because my machine rebooted over the weekend. Also, OneDrive was full. Like, what in the heck? Why? I mean, I have like 500 gigs of free OneDrive space. Well... The reason I had so many gigs of space was because when I bought my Surface, it included a code for like a free, I don't know where it was, 150, 250 gigs of space. And, you know, and then OneDrive comes with 15 gigs of space for free. And if you use your camera on your Windows phone with it, you know, another 15 gigs for free. Um, you know, lots, lots and lots of free 15 gigs. Yep. Today, my uh, one year or two years of free OneDrive expired. And I was like, eh, I've hit the limits. 
So just something to keep in mind, you know, we always kind of thought that, you know, OneDrive space would just continue to be poured upon us. There for a while, they gave it out like candy. Well, unfortunately, I ate it like candy, made me fat. And so now that all my free giveaways have run up, um, I'm out of space. The good news is an infinite uh, scheme to make money. Microsoft has offered for $1.99 a month to sell me 100 gigs of space. That would be kind of helpful. Uh, fortunately, I found a bunch of cat videos to delete, so I no longer need the 100 gigs of space. Um, but for $1.99, for I think it would be a pretty good deal if I, I did run up to it. And honestly, for me, a lot of it is it's pictures. Um, you know, my Windows phone, every picture I take just magically goes out there. I don't have to deal with them. It's worth it. So when I do run out of space, $1.99, we'll see what it is. You know. And speaking of Microsoft making crazy profits, hopefully you all saw the earnings report last week. Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day it was, the stock's up like 10, almost 20%, I think, since uh, the announcement 15, something like that. It's good stuff. So if you're a Microsoft stockholder, you've had a good week. All right. And continuing on things that cause me a pain, why don't I write all these topics and it make me sad? I don't understand. Um, but the next one is... Uh, Jonathan wanted me to mention to you guys that uh, for all the developers out there, Microsoft just recently announced they're going to host an online conference for developers called Connect with the little brackets around it. I don't know, a little cutesy little thing. November 18th and 19th. So Lori was kind enough there in the chat room to post it, and I'm guessing that here in the lower thirds we'll see them pretty soon. Or you'll see it when the this gets produced. But um, – that's a nice little conference. They're going to talk about the new versions of .NET and uh, you know different developer -y type topics. So pretty exciting stuff that hopefully you will uh, enjoy and love if you are a developer type. For the rest of us, eh, just another conference to keep the developers from bothering us for a couple of days. So either way, it's a win-win. All right, uh, number next. How about just a reminder? I don't think this is news to anyone here. But uh, the Surface Pro 4 and the uh, Surface Book, they were released today. One of the guys in my office actually had his delivered and didn't really get to play with it, but I had to see it for a second, so that was kind of neat. Uh, I'm very jealous. Hopefully the Surface Pro 4 can actually run Windows 10 because my Surface Pro 3 that I used to love, ever since I upgraded to Windows 10, I mostly hate. Um, I need to take the time to uninstall Windows 10 and you know start over, but... Man, that takes a lot of work. You know, I got PowerPoints to make and Excel spreadsheets to fill out. I, I can't be sitting around, you know, doing, um, you know, reinstall stuff. That's for the techie people now. Um, but no, but in all reality, though, I, you know, I'm excited to see the Surface Pro 4 stuff come out. Been a big fan of the line ever since. I've had one of every version, and I'll con someone at Rackspace into buying me a Surface Pro 4. Um, but I am still very uh, cautious and waiting on, right? Still got my... Nokia Lumia 635 here, waiting on the 950XL to ship because I am uh, I'm really hoping to get a, a 950XL. Uh, I've never had the really large form factor phone, so this will be the first time. I, I know a lot of people hate the large factors, but I don't know. I thought I would try it since I'm going to have to you know, pony up money out of my own pocket to buy a $500, $600 cell phone. Might as well buy the big fancy one that I want. Um, Lori's also asked if I can get Rackspace to buy her some, uh, buy her a uh, Surface Pro 4. I, I, I'm sure, Lori, why not? Uh, Josh, we just fill out that paperwork. Uh, you know, you're hanging out in the chat room there. Just fill out the paperwork and get Lori one. It'll be good. Um, so anyway, Surface Pro 4, it shipped today. Yay! Um, all right, finally, things that make me happy. Yay! We're through all the sad stuff. Um, so last week, two weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago, um, uh, Jonathan, um, right, you guys all remember Jonathan. He's kind of he's co-hosted the show with me a couple times. Might might actually hang out with me next week too. Uh, but a couple of times, uh, Jonathan's a big gamer, right? Like knows every game known to man. He's made his own game. Remember, I shared uh, Fnatic Blaster, Fnatic Blaster with you a couple years ago. Um, but one of the things uh, with Jonathan uh, was he shared with me this link to this thing. It's called. Uh, keeptalkinggame.com and it's actually a pretty fun little game so the idea um, is that you get a you know it's, a, it's an easy uh, windows download and it's a bomb right so 
there's a bomb that can have anywhere from three to 11 modules. Um, and you have five minutes to defuse the bomb, right? Which sounds not that interesting. But what happens is, so if I'm the computer player, right? I am, I've got the bomb in front of me. I can use my mouse to manipulate it, cut wires, press the buttons in the right sequence, things like that. But then the, uh, the people that are playing with me, I need a teammate or more than one, they have the bomb manual. And neither of us, I can't see the bomb manual. They can't see the computer. And so we have to communicate back and forth, right? Like, all right, one of my modules, I have six wires. And they'll be like, all right, is there any red wires? Yes, there's two, there's two red wires. Is there more than one yellow wire? No, there's only one yellow wire. And we have this back and forth dialogue real quick. And then they'll be like, all right, cut the third wire. And so then I cut the third wire. And then we have to move to the next module. And it's timed. And if you're not a, if you're a logic bound person, like most of us uh, computer geeks are, it's pretty fun, right? Because you're pretty good at it right out of the gate. But I've played it with some people who weren't logic-based people. They were more, you know, touchy-feely, emotional type of people. And uh, they had a real hard time with, like, walking through the sequence. So you have to do the order of operations, what step is next, and based on the, uh, the bomb settings. Uh, so it's really it's, – it's meant to be a, a, a party game. We've played it at work a few times, minus the adult beverages, that I think would make it more interesting. Um, but it's, it's, it's a pretty neat game. So, you know, it's like 15 bucks. Uh, I'd really recommend it. You know, call it team building. Right? Get work to buy it and uh, do a copy of it. And, you know, give it a play. I think you'd like it if you're, you know, into games and that type of thing. You know, so cutting wires and things like that, pretty easy. Uh, but some of them, like there's Simon Says and there's Remember the Steps. And, and it's a three-dimensional bomb, so I have to like be able to rotate it and find out how many batteries the bomb has on it because that changes the code patterns. And uh, as we get to the harder levels, we found that like the lights will go off. So you know, you got five minutes, and all of a sudden the lights go off for ten seconds right in the middle while you're doing it. So you're just kind of stuck. And uh, there's an alarm clock in the room that'll sometimes go off. The music will change, so kind of gets your stress going a little bit. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm a fan. All right. So anyway, uh, keeptalkinggame.com. I no association with. It. I just thought it was fun, so I thought it would share. Um. So another thing that I often do when I hop on the show here is um, Jack always likes me to talk about, you know, businessy topics or businessy books. And um, so tonight I'm actually going to do one of each. Uh, so businessy books, uh, two books I've read recently, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Shark Bites, um, both Todd Clint recommendations, I might point out. Actually, uh, Todd used uh, Amazon's whole lending thing to lend me Shark Bites. So that's kind of neat. I didn't have to buy it. He lent it to me for two weeks. So I could read it. Um, both of those books, they fall into a new category for me I'm developing uh, as I kind of like think through and remember books and categorize them. And I'm calling them half and half books. Why? Because half of the book is really interesting, you know, personal narrative around something I was interested in, right? In the case of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? When he, uh, and the story tells, uh, you know, these detailed recollections, which are probably completely made up. But, uh, you know, when he would interact with his, uh, his rich dad, right, and, you know, the lessons he would teach him and how the dialogue would go and the feelings and emotions, like really good, compelling stuff to help you learn the lesson. But then the other half of the book he wrote about, well, I'm so damn rich now and I got so rich by doing real estate and you should do real estate. And did I mention I'm rich? And did I mention I do it with real estate? Just a little too much self-promotion for me. Um, Shark Bites, the same thing. I love the show Shark Tank, right? So if you're a fan of Shark Tank, you should read the book. Um, but one of the downsides to me is the guy, the main author, or the main author of the book, the first half of the book, I bet he plugs his company 30 times, right? It would be like if you go back to the SharePoint admin books that Todd and I wrote. Imagine if like every other page said SharePoint 911 and had a link to it, right? No matter how valuable the content is, it's just annoying when every other paragraph or every other page is them selling you something else, right? Say it once. I got it. If I was interested in your product, I would have latched onto it the first time you mentioned it. The 30th time, just guaranteed that I would never go look up whatever his stupid product is. Um, so anyway, when you're writing books one day, just remember that, you know, a little shameless promotion, it's good. 50% of the book, it's bad. All right, so that's my two most recent book uh, updates. Let's see. Uh, the last little topic here I wanted uh, to hit on is back to my SharePoint governance days, right? I, I don't do a lot of SharePoint uh, talks these days. We all know I'm a 
pretty hardcore Azure nerd, you know, busy uh, making new products so that we can, you know, handle your pets out in Azure. Um, but we were actually having a conversation um, the other day about uh, death by a thousand scripts, right? And so, you know, one of the things that's very pervasive in the support world is you got a lot of really smart guys who have problems they have to solve, and if they see the same problem more than twice, if they're really good at their job, what are they going to do? They're going to write a script to solve the problem instead of, uh, you know, doing it over and over again, which is a pretty good idea, right? I was very guilty of that in my uh, back in my administrator days as well. So, you know, why script? Why do anything that I can just script and not have to mess with it again later? Um, but for my engineering teams, you know, and my quality control processes, those guys writing their own scripts is kind of scary, right? We You've heard Todd and I wax poetically a thousand times about, right, you should never trust any PowerShell script that you download off the internet or the intranet, that matter, right? So that's what happens. It's real easy for me to write a PowerShell script that resets all the IIS servers in my farm. Um, but when I uh, reset all the servers in my farm, um, you know, that script was written just for that one environment. But then I upload it, right? And so the next guy comes along and gets it. Well, he has a farm that only has one server. Well, it turns out I wrote the defaults to the server, you know, to assume more than one server. So it ends up looping infinitely through his one server, and he, you know, ends up with this down, downtime cycle that he can't understand. Right? PowerShell scripts can do bad things without quality controls and, uh, uh, you know, different checks in place. So we have to find a way to kind of reel that in so we can have the scripts, have the guys doing their own thing, but not have all the challenges associated with rogue PowerShell. And so that reminded me of my SharePoint days. We used to have the same exact problem with SharePoint Designer. All right? SharePoint Designer was free. Remember all those stupid jokes? They were funny for about the first month. Um, but to this day, right, we still tell SharePoint Designer are free jokes. It's, it's really we haven't gotten new material ever. We created one set of funny material and just kept using it. True story. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry, some of the chatter just said they threw up a little bit in their mouth when I said SharePoint Designer. I apologize. All right, but one of the things where I would teach governance about SharePoint Designer was, you know, you have to have a way to, to enable it, right? You can't just be like, no one gets SharePoint Designer, because what you're really saying is, no one gets SharePoint Designer, unless I like you, then you can have SharePoint Designer. So if you bring me a batch of cookies, I'll probably let you use SharePoint Designer. Or, you know, if I really can't stand you because you took my parking place one day, no matter how good your business need is, I'm always going to say, no SharePoint designer for you, right? Straight uh, uh, soup Nazi style. All right? Good Seinfeld reference. You, you guys get that? Probably not. Some of you are too young for that. But um, so what I always preached was you should have a methodology for uh, giving people access, right? So, hey, if you want to use SharePoint designer, you need to go to this, you know, two-hour training class. And then from this two-hour training class, we're going to spend an hour and 45 minutes of it teaching you that SharePoint Designer is the devil. And if you do anything bad with it, we're just going to revert all your changes back to the site definition. Right? That's kind of all the training was. But, but you needed to establish a process. Here was the protocol for getting SharePoint Designer. You want it? Great. And thanks for the brownies. I'm going to eat the brownies. But you still have to go to this training class and work through this process. Right? You might need to... Uh, be able to work through and get, you know, so your first step might be to become a site collection manager. I have a process for that. Once you get to there, then you can become a SharePoint designer or power user. I have a process for that. As long as you always have a methodology for enabling it, then you don't ever have to tell anyone no. You're just going to educate them and put them through the right process so that whatever they do with the tool is a great solution. So the same thing as we fight through with our, uh, our PowerShell scripts today, right? I don't want to stop guys from writing PowerShell scripts. Hell no. I want them to write more PowerShell scripts. But what I want is I want to create a process, right? And so the process might become, you know, hey, before you write the script, you need to validate it through engineering. When you finish the script, you have to check it into GitHub or, you know, some type of source code repository, Visual Studio Online, whatever. And then once you've done that, then we'll have our QC team check it. And then once it's approved, boom, then it's available for everyone. And we know it's a good script that works for your problem but it's also not going to blow up Bob's problem if he, uh, you know, runs your script as well. So I guess this is, I, I just bring all this up, right, to remind you all that you've, got a, you've learned a lot of governance skills in the SharePoint space. When you move on to other facets, whether it be from SharePoint to Office 365 or SharePoint to Azure or SharePoint to use car sailing, I don't know what you guys are going to do. 
but you know, take and apply the lessons you've learned. Don't go and beat your head up and be like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? And go reinvent the wheel. You've already learned all of these things. Just apply them, right? All the same lessons learned, best practices, governance techniques, training techniques that you guys have learned. Still very, very valuable, still very repeatable. So take advantage of it. All right, so that was my uh, my, my sprinkling doo -doo 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 of SharePoint content um, that you know that it saved me some grief this week because, I was like, hey, guys, you have this problem. I've already got it solved because I solved it uh, on a whiteboard for a bunch of uh, SharePoint customers years ago. All right, um, I think that was the last major topics. Um, I did a good job. I didn't. I got a couple of topics I put in for next week. I didn't use any of those. Yay me. Uh, I do think Jonathan Mass, I've mentioned that, will probably join me next week. Hopefully not here in my basement. Though in my basement, I want you guys to notice. So you can kind of see all the, the wall of golf balls. It's all the different places I've played. So there's a white one there. There's a pink one there. That white one right there? Yeah. Three weeks ago, I made my first hole-in-one. It's that ball right there. Woo, woo, woo. So very exciting for me. Probably you guys don't care very much, but uh, it's very exciting for me. So, all right, that's all of our topics for tonight. Jumping over into uh, the promotion, I guess it is not self, uh, uh, it's not Todd's self censure post. Whatever, I give up. I'll just do the promotions instead of telling my dumb joke. Uh, so, SP TechCon, February 21st through 24th, back in Austin again. Uh, Austin was a pretty neat city. It was kind of neat to get out there, see something different. We had some uh, different food, just different vibes. So, Definitely check out SP TechCon in Austin in February. Um, I'm also supposed to tease a little. Do, 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 may I tease my hair? Um, there's a new Azure-based uh, show starting in November. Uh, we don't have all of the, uh, the different um, pieces on that yet, but we, uh, we've got the uh, Azure-based show coming. So very excited. Hopefully we'll get that off the ground in November, and I'm certain as soon as we have a date, we will share it with you guys ad nauseum during this shameless self-promotion period. Um, and yes, my hole in one was on a mini golf course. So I got it through the clown's mouth. You guys are all so very funny in the chat room as you make fun of my stuff. Um, and finally, I've got the uh, Oklahoma City uh, SharePoint user group, or I don't, uh, Todd does, so I meant I had it like it's written down there. I need to read it too, that's what I meant. Uh, the Oklahoma City uh, SharePoint user group November 11th, uh, 2015, that'll be an online conference. And uh, there, here's the information for that. And Lori just posted in the chat room. So feel free to check that one out too. I'm not really sure what the topic's gonna be covered yet, but uh, it'll be a good time. All right, on that note, um, I think that's a wrap, folks. There's a Monday Night Football to be watched upstairs and you know, all types of fun things. You know, once again, thanks to all of you for hanging out with me in the chat room. Lori is always great job on uh, keeping me honest, keeping me uh, well-timed and well-informed. And um, the good news, I'll see you all next week. So have a good evening. And we're out. Ha-ha.